everyone and welcome to a cozy autumn reading vlog. I wanted to do a reading vlog over the next few days because, well actually for two reasons. One, because I have off for the next two days so seemed like a good time. So this is going to be at least 48 hours if not longer just depending on how I feel. The other reason is because I have not really been reading a lot lately. I have been having some pretty bad mental health days and that always takes kind of a toll the most on my reading. So it's currently the 24th of September and I have only read 30 books this month which is awfully depressing. So I thought maybe if I film a reading vlog it will get me more in the mood for reading and it will also hold me accountable to actually read books. So yeah, that is what I'm doing today. I actually just filmed a get ready with me video that I'm not sure if I'm going to post or not because it's half get ready with me, half life update. And you know, life just hasn't been going the greatest lately, so it wasn't the most positive video ever. And I just don't know if other people are going to want to hear about that kind of stuff right now because everybody has got stuff going on in their lives. So I'm not sure if I'm going to post that or not, but I did just film it so I thought I'd tell you. But then this morning I started reading The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. I took the dust jacket off because underneath is this very fitting autumnal orange color and I very thoroughly enjoy it. But this is a adult thriller book. It is about a woman called Cass and she basically is driving home one night and she talks to her husband on the phone and her husband tells her not to take the shortcut home because there's a storm a brewing and it's just a dark woodsy shortcut that is not really safe to take by yourself. But she takes it anyway and while she's driving down this road she sees that there is a car pulled over to the side. So she pulls over in front of them but she she thinks to herself that this might be, you know, not safe to do. So she ends up driving off instead of potentially helping this person. Then the next morning she hears on the news, or actually I think her husband tells her, that that woman that was stopped on the side of the car, she had been murdered. And now the character that we're following feels very guilty for not stopping and helping this woman. And she's dealing with that. But also she's having some weird memory problems where she cannot remember half of the stuff that she has done or told people she's going to do and stuff like that. So we're also kind of following a very unreliable narrator, which I don't feel like I've ever read a lot of unreliable narrator stories, if any. But yeah, that's what this book is about. And so far I think I'm 80 pages into it. Yep, exactly 80 pages. And I've been wanting to read this book for over a year now because I read one of this author's other books, which for some reason I always forget the title of despite absolutely loving the book. It was called Behind Closed Doors. I read this last year, um, Behind Closed Doors, and I literally loved that book so much. That was like the first thriller I ever read that I gave more than three stars, and I think I gave it like five stars, so I super loved it. And I don't really remember what I thought of the writing, but I assume it was good enough for me to give it five stars because the thing I loved about that book was the plot, but I feel like even if it had a good plot, if it had bad writing, I wouldn't have given it five stars. So I assume I liked the writing, whereas in this book, the only thing that as of right now, 80 pages in, that really sticks out to me is the fact that I'm not loving the writing. It just feels very kind of blunt and straightforward. And specifically, like, the husband's character, he speaks, <laughs> like, he speaks as if he's giving way too much information all the time. Like, even on page two, I'll just give you a little, like, inkling of what the dialogue is like. So, she's on the phone with her husband, and she says, is everything all right? And he says, yes, it's just that I've got an awful migraine. It started about an hour ago, and it's getting steadily worse. That's why I'm phoning. Do you mind if I go up to bed? And then she says, of course not. Have you taken anything for it? And he goes, yes, but it doesn't seem to be shifting. I thought I'd go and lie down in the spare room. That way, if I do fall asleep, you won't disturb me when you come in. And then he says uh, some other stuff, and then she says she's going to come back through the woods, and he says, promise you won't come back that way. First of all, I don't want you driving through the woods on your own at night, and second, there's a storm coming. I just feel like that was a lot of information that he didn't need to say. So it just feels very, like, blunt and almost like they're kind of over-explaining some things. So that was, like, a small example. I don't even know if it really came across what I was trying to say, but 
they just feel like they talk very straightforward, very blunt, and almost kind of like they're over-explaining everything. Almost feels like kind of dumbing down the reader a little bit, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's all I really think of the book so far. I like this... I am borderline have a love-hate relationship with this unreliable narrator stuff because on the one hand, I like it because it adds this whole other element to the story, but on the other hand, it's actually kind of really frustrating, but I don't know if that's like in a good way kind of frustrating, if that makes sense. So that's kind of where I'm at with this book right now. I don't really know. So I think I'm going to try and edit the video that I just filmed, the Get Ready With Me video, see how I like it and if I possibly want to upload it, and then I'm going to eat lunch. Then I know I want to film at least one other video today. I want to film my um, October TBR, and then I'm just going to read for the rest of the day. So it's a bit later now and I ended up editing my get ready with me video and I think I'm gonna post it. I'm still a little bit on the fence but I think I'm gonna post it. We'll see. Uh, then I ate lunch and then I read up to page 100 in the breakdown and then I also filmed the TBR video that I said I wanted to film earlier. So overall this has actually been a pretty productive day and it's only like quarter after three in the afternoon so hopefully I can still get some other stuff done like editing the TBR video and also uploading some of the videos that I pre-filmed for Vlogoween. I think I might actually try and read outside for a little bit because I think it's officially like that fall weather where hopefully the bugs won't bother me too much if I read outside. So we'll see if I can do that. Um, like I said, I did read up to page 100 in this book, and as far as my thoughts on this, I've come to a realization that, number one, the writing isn't bothering me as much as it was um, before. I still do feel like it is a little strangely straightforward sometimes, but I don't think it's like bad writing by any means. I don't know if I'm really making sense when I'm talking about the writing. But the other thing I uh, realized was um, when I read Behind Closed Doors and loved it, I always described that book whenever I've talked about it as being extremely frustrating to read because just the situation that the main character is in in that book is it's just so frustrating to read it. But it's also frustrating in like the best way possible um, just because of the way that like the story and everything is weaved together it's done really well so that frustrating feeling is like you kind of like it but it still is frustrating if that makes sense so I've realized that that's kind of what is also happening in this book where we're following an unreliable narrator so it's very frustrating reading from her perspective but at the same time I just kind of have the feeling that there is this like great story being crafted around that and I'm just not really gonna realize it until the end just like I did with behind closed doors so I kind of I'm getting very high hopes for this and I'm hoping that it's gonna leave me feeling the same way that behind closed doors did and yeah so I feel like even though I was kind of harsh on it earlier I'm starting to appreciate it a little bit more so that's how I'm feeling about it right now and it's not very long either it's only about a little over 300 pages so I only have about 200 pages left to read so like I said I'm gonna try and read outside for a little bit if not then I'm just gonna read in the house no big deal but yeah that is all for now I'll talk to y'all later <laughs>update you again last night. I kind of just had a really lazy night, but I did end up finishing the entirety of the breakdown. I read this in one day, which very rarely happens, but if it's going to happen with any book, it's going to be a thriller, and I really enjoyed this. The little issue that I had with the writing in the beginning, either I just didn't notice it as I continued in the book, or it definitely got better, the writing, because by the end I didn't really even notice it at all and I just thoroughly enjoyed this book. At this point I think B.A. Paris is probably one of my favorite authors now or definitely like an autobi author because at this point both of the books that I've read of hers I've really enjoyed. I think I probably liked Behind Closed Doors a bit better than this one but this was still a solid 
four star read. So the ending of this book just hits you with all of the plot twists. And the only like gripe that I would have with this book really, which isn't even really a negative thing, is that towards the middle of it, a, a large portion of what this book is about is the fact that our main character thinks that she might have early onset dementia because that's what her mother had when she was kind of younger. So she thinks that she might have this because she is having a lot of trouble with her memories, which is why she's a very unreliable narrator. And for a good chunk of the middle of this book, we kind of just follow her daily life as she forgets things, and it started to feel a little bit repetitive, and I almost felt like we weren't really progressing in the story, but then the ending happens, and that's where, like, all the plot twists hit you, and it didn't feel, like, rushed or anything, so even though it felt a little bit repetitive in the middle, I still felt like by the end I realized that that kind of repetitiveness was needed in order to get that the proper kind of character progression in the story, if that makes sense. So like it was kind of repetitive, but I also understand why it needed to be there. So that was like my only negative thing about the book. As far as the ending, I did predict one of the twists, but I didn't predict the other ones. And I feel like at this point, I've just read so many thrillers that I'm always going to be able to predict something because I've just read so many of them. But I think even when sometimes I do predict the ending of thrillers, I can still appreciate the fact that it was a well-crafted story, even though maybe there was just something about it that I felt like I had read before and so I was able to predict what happened. Hopefully that made sense. So I kind of predicted the ending, but I still feel like it was a well-crafted story. And I just remembered a kind of funny story, or maybe it isn't a funny story. Maybe it's like you had to be there in order for it to be funny. Actually, in the moment it wasn't even that funny. Okay, let me just tell you the story that happened while I was reading this book last night. So this book, Borderline, has like when Stranger Calls vibes because something else that happens throughout this book is that our main character keeps getting these like phone calls repeatedly throughout the day and there's nobody on the other line but she knows for a fact that somebody else is on the line even though they're not saying anything and so it kind of has when a stranger calls vibes and there are certain moments throughout this book where she's like very paranoid and she thinks somebody's watching her through the windows and then she's getting all these phone calls and it's just it's kind of suspenseful and tense in moments so while I was reading one of those moments, I was getting very into it, and mid very tense scene, all of the lights in my house go out. Like the power fully just cut out of my house for a good 15 seconds, and then it came back on, so it was just like a little fluke thing. But for a good two seconds, I was like, well, this is the end for me. <laughs> so it just so happened to land at like a really tense moment of the book when she was like looking at her windows because she thinks that somebody's watching her and then the phone keeps ringing and then all of my lights turn off and it was just all around. It was very creepy in the moment. Afterwards I thought that was kind of funny. So I thought I'd tell you even though it might not be funny for you guys. But then because I was in the mood to read another thriller after this because you know is the season for thrillers and horrors, I decided to pick up a book called Luckiest Girl Alive and I DNF'd it five pages in because I just did not vibe with the writing at all. Like I read five pages and I felt like it took me 20 minutes to read those pages because I just had to keep rereading the sentences because they were not flowing at all. So I'd like to think that it was the book and not just my brain being stupid. So I ended up DNFing it. Um, I might pick it up again later, but I also didn't hear the best things about that book anyway. So I'm probably just gonna unhaul it at some point. But that kind of left me not really knowing what to pick up next because all of the other thrillers or horrors that I have on my TBR, I put them on my TBR for October, which I already filmed. I didn't edit it yet, but I already filmed it. So I could read one of those books even though it's not October yet, but then I feel like it would mess up my TBR. So we'll just see what happens. But anyways, because I couldn't figure out what to read next, I ended up picking up a book that I've been reading for like three months and that's The White Queen by Philippa Gregory so I read one chapter of it last night and that was it. Um, this is one of those books that I like it and I enjoy the writing so that's why I keep reading it even though it's taking me a really long time. It's just that it's not the most fast-paced book ever and it's also not the most intriguing topic for me so it just takes me quite a long time to read these kinds of books because I have to be in a very specific mood for it and that mood doesn't usually last very long. So I've been reading this for about three months. Um, 
we'll see when I finish it. Then, just to make my reading situation even harder, this morning I started watching Ratchet on Netflix, which is a horror or thriller kind of TV show, and I only watched one episode, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. So now that's all I want to do is just watch that TV show. So am I gonna read any more in this reading vlog? Possibly not. Am I now just gonna document my time watching Ratchet? Possibly yes. So at this point, it's almost 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, yeah, I've been really just having a very lazy day. So I think I'll probably just update y'all tomorrow when I get home from work because I gotta go back to work tomorrow. Or maybe I'll update you tonight if I manage to come up with something else to read because I just don't really know what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> So it is now two days later and I have basically not read anything. I've tried to read a couple of different books and you know what, I've just come to the realization that at the moment I'm just not in the mood to read and that's okay. Also don't mind this thing that's just very angry on my chin, just don't look at it. Anyways, what I have been doing though is watching Ratchet on Netflix. I am more than halfway through the season, I guess. Um, I assume they're gonna make more than one, but I think there's like eight episodes and I'm on episode five, so I'm more than halfway through it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So I thought I would turn this reading vlog into a TV watching vlog and when I finish the TV show then I will give you a little mini review at the end of this video, which I assume is probably gonna be the next clip that you watch. But to give you my thoughts right now, you know what, I'll just save them until the end. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Because I've never reviewed a TV show before, so as far as my thoughts go, there's not a lot. So I'll just save them all until the end. So it is now a couple of days later and I have finished Ratchet, so I thought I would give you my thoughts on it as I previously discussed. I watched the other clips back and realized that I looked like a potato for most of this vlog, so I thought I would try and dress a little fancily today. I also may have taken some inspiration with my look from the Ratchet TV show. I hope that you noticed. Anyways, so if you don't know what Ratchet is, it is about Nurse Ratchet, who is a fictional character from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is a book and a TV show that, or not a TV show, a movie. It's a book and a movie that I have, haven't seen or watched. So if you want me to compare like how her character is in the TV show versus the movie or the book, couldn't tell you because I'd never seen it or read it. But I have heard that apparently this TV show is supposed to be like a prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, so if that helps you at all, I don't know. Um, but if you are also in the dark like me and you've never really heard of this character before or not familiar with her, this TV show opens with someone has murdered a bunch of priests and now he's being sent to a mental hospital so that they can like evaluate his mental state to see if he's able to stand trial or not. And at the same time we're following Mildred Ratchet, who was a nurse in the war and she is now getting a job at this same mental hospital and a lot of stuff goes down. It is created by the same people or person, Ryan Murphy, who created uh, American Horror Story, and I feel like that is very evident from this TV show. Like, you can just tell that it's made by the same people, um, not just because some of the same actors are in it, but it just has that same kind of American Horror Story feel to it. And it, I personally, though, I was more invested in this one season of Ratchet than I have been in any American Horror Story season. Like, I'm only up to hotel, so I guess I can't compare them all, but I've just never been as invested in a season of American Horror Story as I've been in this Ratchet TV show. So, I guess that's pretty good. I think one of the things that I liked about Ratchet was that it didn't have any kind of supernatural elements to it, which most seasons of American Horror Story does have. And for me personally, when it comes to <laughs> the kind of supernatural that's in American Horror Story, it's like, it for me it just takes, like, it lowers the stakes quite a lot. Because if somebody dies or somebody gets murdered, they're gonna come back to life or they're gonna come back as a ghost, they're gonna be re resurrected with witchcraft or something is gonna happen. And it just, it lowers 
lowers the stakes for me when you throw that element in there. Whereas with Ratchet, it's more like real life, so I was a lot more intrigued with it. I was more, it was more suspenseful. I was more invested in the characters and their well-being, so I really enjoyed that. But by far my favorite thing about Ratchet definitely has to be that it's just a very visually appealing TV show. Like the colors and the architecture, obviously I'm a big fan of like 40s and 50s style hence what I'm trying to do today. So it was just very visually pleasing to watch, even though it was also visually quite gory sometimes. It was still, you know, it was quite nice on the other times when it wasn't so bloody. But yeah, that is my little review of Ratchet. I would definitely recommend it unless you don't like, you know, gore or violence or language or like explicit sexual things, you know, all of that stuff, then probably don't watch this show. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this reading vlog slash what turned into a TV show review. Hopefully that wasn't too weird and y'all liked this enough. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!